Yo! What is obvious even after a cursory amount of research is that animal rights and the treatment of animals varies considerably worldwide. I want to know why so we can better know what to do. But I want to start with identifying the different regions so we can know how. Consider typing Wikipedia animal rights by country or territory. A chart will appear featuring most countries. Categories include recognition of animal sentience, recognition of animal suffering, anti-cruelty laws meet OIE standards, and any laws against animal cruelty. Nine Eastern European countries got four yeses plus Brazil. Five African countries, four Asian countries, two Middle Eastern countries, and Belarus got four noes. Another six African countries got three noes, but yes to laws against animal cruelty. But since it says that they are unenforced, making them pretty useless, these countries are almost as bad as those of the four no's. Now, since I'm a lifetime United States citizen, I want to use my country as a standard reference point. Now, according to this article, all African and Asian countries range from horrible to substandard. And all former Soviet bloc countries plus Canada and Mexico are substandard compared to the U.S., now, some specifically coerce animals into terrorizing fights to the death. But as for bullfighting in the U.S. and Canada, it is unlike traditional bullfighting in that bulls are neither harmed nor killed. Some shows simply feature a cowboy leaping around the bull. Others feature the throwing of plastic banderillas to stick to a Velcro strap upon the bull. Bullfighting where bulls are taunted, stabbed, and mutilated with sharp metal banderillas and slaughtered for entertainment is found in Mexico, four South American countries, and Spain. In France and India, some designated local traditions are exempted from the bullfighting ban. While cockfighting is illegal throughout the United States, Canada, and Australia, it is legal in Mexico, Cuba, parts of Central and South America, Madagascar, Pakistan, Vietnam, and the Philippines. In Spain, France, India, and Indonesia, some designated local traditions are exempted from the cockfighting ban. While dogfighting is illegal throughout North America, most of Eastern Europe, India, and Australia, it is legal in some African countries, China, Afghanistan, and throughout the former Soviet Union. And we simply lack data on bullfighting, cockfighting, and dogfighting for much of the world. Then there is the Global Animal Law Association, globalanimallaw.org, and their legislation database under national level animal legislation, they have divided cases in numbers one through eight. Case one is countries where no animal legislation was found. Case eight is countries with a basic national law, national civil code provision giving a new status to animals, and national constitutional principle. The higher the number, the better for animals. Countries ranked case one, the worst, include most of Africa, the Middle East, China, and Mongolia. Countries ranked in meager case two include the rest of Africa, Greenland, Mexico, Australia, the entire former Soviet Union, and much of Eastern Europe. The United States, Brazil, and Argentina rank case six, while Egypt, India, and Bhutan rank case 7. Only three countries rank case 8, the best. Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. The perspective of other similar websites should also be considered. Unfortunately, most countries, including some that respect animals in other areas, conduct animal testing and experimentation of various types, including the testing of unnecessary cosmetics products. Some countries are in flux as far as reconsidering bans on animal testing. As for the United States, the legality of both animal testing and the aforementioned animal welfare criteria varies from state to state. WorldAtlas.com claims that the European Union has eliminated this type of animal cruelty. See my post, Animal Experiments, on WordPress.com. KC Sunday. Now, what about the impact of religion on animal rights? Many people see the religions of Buddhism, Jainism, and Shintoism as best supporting animal rights and welfare, and they seem to be the best on paper. Uh, the religious texts, rhetoric, and some conduct of such practitioners 
also seems to uphold that. The big problem is that every region where those religions are prevalent are known for substandard treatment of animals. Regions where Christianity is prevalent, far as that goes, are apparently no better in this respect than regions where non-religion or atheism are prevalent. And non-religious areas show no improvement or over Christian ones. Uh, Islamic regions do seem especially bad, consider their disparaging belief in regard to dogs, although this might be due to other factors. Summarily, in summary, I see little impact of religion or, or lack to, thereof on, on regional policies or countries' policies. However, everyone who believes in a creator God should, they should, by common sense, greatly care for animals since a God would necessarily have created animals just as he created humans. However, animal rights and welfare strongly coincide with a racial pattern. They do. White regions are generally much better than non-white regions. And animal rights and welfare strongly coincide with a prosperity pattern. Wealthy regions are generally much better than poorer regions. I must note, to be honest, that white regions are usually the wealthy regions and non-white regions are usually, usually... The poor, not always, but usually the poorer regions. What should certainly be without dispute is the impact of culture on animal rights and welfare. For example, the well-known type of brutal bullfighting originated in Spain. In China, uh, bulls fight one another instead. The Spanish colonization of Mexico and parts of South America introduced this type of bullfighting into those regions, called Spanish-style bullfighting, where it spread like a virus. What people from animal-friendly countries can do. Officials can deny citizenship to those from animal-unfriendly countries, can prevent them from any access into the country, and can send barbarian-type people already there permanently, permanently back to where they came. Officials can enact bans and imports from these countries. Officials can end all, fina all financial and other aid to these countries, all aid. Officials can explain to the officials of substandard countries why they are treated such, so they are coerced into changing. Citizens can petition and vote to remove animal unfriendly officials from office and instate animal friendly officials in their place. Citizens can stop from ever visiting an animal unfriendly country so as not to support them with with tourist money. Citizens can find where their products come from, then stop buying products coming from animal abusing countries. Citizens can either stop buying foreign products or only buy products originating from animal friendly regions. What animal friendly people throughout the world can do. Recognize sentience in all higher animals. Sentience is the capacity to experience emotions and possess self-awareness. Imagine if some space aliens observed us and concluded that we lacked sentience. Recognize that there is a correlation between kindness toward animals and kindness toward people. Here's a quote. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 12.10 Find out which products are tested on animals and no longer buy them. Leave your body to science to replace an animal being used for dissection. Donate to animal rights and environmentalist groups. Educate others about animal welfare and care for our planet. Catch you later.